the name of the Father and Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is the fourth and the last Sunday of the last complete month of the Coptic calendar, which is the month of Nisra. And as we go through the reading of the church, we try to see Jesus. Where is our Lord Jesus Christ in the reading? And the role of the church is to present our Lord Jesus Christ to everyone. So, present our Lord Jesus Christ through the right of the church, through the reading of the church, through the prayers of the church, through the praises of the church. So, everything we do here, we do it to know our Lord Jesus Christ more, and to love Him more, and to have a better relationship with Him. And the first Sunday, we present our Lord Jesus Christ, or we know from the reading that our Lord Jesus Christ is the vine, and we are the branches. He is the life, and He gives the everlasting life to those who abide in Him. So our goal is to abide in Him and He in us, that we may have everlasting life love, joy, peace, and all the, the fruit of the Spirit. So we have to abide in Christ. And we explain how to abide in Him. And the second Sunday, we figure out that our Lord Jesus Christ is the true physician, the true physician of our souls, our bodies, and our spirit, and He is the hope of those who have no hope, the helper of those who have no helper, and the harbor of the faint heart. Last week, we see him as a strong man. No one can enter a strong man's house. We said the first strong man here is the Satan and plunder his goods unless he first bind the strong man and then he will plunder his house. So, sorry, the first strong man is our Lord Jesus Christ and the second strong man is Satan. That's why we said, let the Lord Jesus Christ enter your heart and be his heart, your mind, and be his mind, and your life, and be his life, your house, and be his house. Because he, if he is uncontrolled, we are in peace. If he is uncontrolled, we are in full of blessings and joy and happiness. In today's reading from the, chop, from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 13, uh, at, this is the end of the year the church tried to remind us with the second coming of Christ it was a little bit long gospel because of chapter 13 of the gospel of St. Mark giving us an idea about the, the signs of the second coming of Christ I will skip that and will go for verse 26 after all this sign happened, then they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with great power and glory. And then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the breast part of earth to the forest part of heaven. As surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth would pass away, but my words would be no, by no means pass away. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angel in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not when the time is. So, how do you see here our Lord Jesus Christ? Who is our Lord Jesus Christ here? Hmm. No, in the reading. Hmm. Who is the Lord Jesus Christ here? And this is an icon of the second coming. He would come with his angels and saints, and those who were in his left hand side would be perished, and those who were in the right hand side would be kept for everlasting life. So he is the Lord here. Just judge. 
the just judge. The Lord had two comings. In his first coming, he was so humble, no one even heard about him. But the shepherd and the man. But in his second coming, he would come in his power and glory to judge the living and the dead. That's why I don't know what comes to your mind when you see this icon. What, what kind of thoughts comes to your mind when you see this icon? Where would you be at that day? In which group? In his right hand side. Are you ready for that? No one knows the hour. One of the fathers said, the end of each one is the end of all. I'm not waiting for the second coming of Christ. Maybe I will be at that time there. But for me, my departure day from this earth, for me, is like the second coming of Christ. It's the end of me. So the end of each is the end of all. And the end of all, the end of each. So, do you even think about it? Do you even bother yourself to think about the second coming of Christ? In the creed, every letter you say, we look for the resurrection of and the life to come. Do we really mean it? Do we think about it? Or we're just focusing on the earthly stuff, eating, drinking, working, having fun, playing, whatever, and that's it. One day and one hour, all these things suddenly will be stopped. And you're going to face our Lord Jesus Christ one to one. How will be this meeting when I see the Lord? It will be a joyful one. I'm looking forward to have it. Many should be all of us are looking forward to have to have this day when I stand in front of the Lord and see Him in His glory. Wow, it's an amazing. It's awesome. Do I really want to have to to see this day I'm ready for it or it's not in my mind very important very important most of the fathers said we I'm reminding myself every time that the Lord is coming and St. Paul said ليكن حلمكم معروف عند جميع الناس الرب قريب. Let it be known for everybody that the Lord is near. This is our dream. We are dreaming of the day that He will come and will see Him in His glory. This day will be a very joyful day. Will be an awesome day. Will be an outstanding day for those who are ready and will be a very fearful day and a dark day and a day of weeping for those who are not ready while we are coming cl close to the end of the year the church try to remind us with the second coming of Christ that everyone will ask himself this question I'm ready for this or not that's why out of the wisdom of the church and this is maybe encouraging us to pray from the Agbeya the book of hours out of the wisdom of the church every day before we sleep 
the church assigned an hour, which is the twelfth hour, to pray. The litany of this prayer, the first litany is, Behold, I'm about to stand before the just judge, terrifying and trembling because of my many sins, for a life spent in pleasure deserves condemnation. But repent, O my soul, as long as you dwell on this earth, for inside the grave thus does not praise, and among the dead no one remembers, neither in Hades does anyone give thanks. Therefore arise from the slumber of laziness and entreat the Savior, repenting and saying, God have mercy on me and save me. This is how to be ready. Very important to be ready is to live the life of repentance. God have mercy on me and save me. No one is worthy. I'm the first. But we have to be watchful. If we did something wrong, O oh my Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord, and forgive me our sin. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord, and cleanse out my heart and my mind. Create in me a keen heart to God and renew a right spirit in my inward parts. Wash me through with my equity. So, it's an ongoing process of offering repentance. Make me always a clean. It's a, as if I'm inviting for a wedding and I, I only have one dress that I'm, I'm wearing. But I don't know exactly when will be this wedding? So every day or whenever I have a chance, I will wash it and clean it and iron it and I will be ready because I don't know when will the invitation will come. And I don't want to miss this event. And at the same time, I don't know exactly when will be this. I'm not for sure that the wedding will happen. I'm not, I'm, I know for sure that it will be awesome. And I know for sure that no one will enter unless his dress be clean. And this is the dress that I have received on the day of the baptism. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself. We put on Christ. So we need to keep the image of Christ in us. That in his second coming. I told, this, I told you this before. That in the second coming, one of the fathers said, the second coming will be easy to distinguish between those who will be in the right hand of the Lord and those who will be in the left hand of the Lord. Do you know how? They said, very easy. The angels will see the image of Christ in me. Oh, you have the image of Christ? Come in the right hand. You have the image of Christ? Come in the right hand. You have the image of Christ? Come in the right hand. All of you have the image of Christ? Be in the right hand. Somebody else who does not believe in Christ or does not look worthy of the gospel of the Lord, Oh, you don't have the image of Christ in you. I couldn't see his image in you. Sorry, you have to be on this side. So we need to keep the image of Christ in us. We need to be like him in everything we say and everything we do. So any time the angel came, we'll find the image of Christ in us. We have to keep his love. We have to keep his patience. We have to keep his humility. We have to, to keep his mercy. We have to keep his good words. And these in us. So anytime the angels came, oh, you are Christ-like. Come to the right hand. Is it easy? Yes. And no. Yes. And no. It looks easy, but it's not easy to to have it. To have the image of Christ. So that's why I need help. And I need a strength. And that's why the second point that's very important is to ask for help day and night. So, O oh my Lord Jesus Christ, forgive me a sinner and have mercy on me. And O oh my Lord Jesus Christ, help me to keep your image in me. In everything I say, in everything I do, it needs help. Yes, I need help. I can't do it myself. That's why I pray earnestly day and night asking for help. That's why I come to the church asking for help. That's why I, I take communion. That the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ may strengthen me and strengthen my weakness. 
this is how I can be ready. Repentance, ask for help all the time, and also be watchful. I told this, I told you this before, but I will repeat it very quick, and I, I hope that you remember. Watch your thoughts because they will become a word. And watch your words because they become action. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they, be, they become your character. And watch your character because it becomes your destiny. Watch. Do we pay attention of what we see? What we say? What we touch? What we smell? What we hear? Do we pay attention of our mind and senses and words and actions? And do we pay attention of that? Very important. We have to be watchful. One of the saints, Saint Sarah, said, I always tell myself that when I take any step that I may not be able to take the other step. So I have to be watchful. When I see anything on the computer, on the internet, on the TV, you have to remind yourself, the Lord is present. What if the Lord comes now? When you go to any place, you have to ask yourself, the Lord is present. What if the Lord comes now? And so on. And by this, I may be ready. So I, because I will be careful of what I'm saying and what I'm hearing and what I'm touching and the place that I'm visiting and the company that I join and the conversation that I'm a part to because the Lord is coming and He may come soon. By coming to the liturgy, we are practicing the second coming of the Lord. Because the Lord is in front of us. He is on the altar. So by coming to the liturgy, I'm practicing His second coming. I'm standing in front of the Lord. That's why the time of the liturgy is a perfect time to check in yourself, your thoughts, your deeds, your emotions, your behaviors, your relationship. And if you find anything that it's not appropriate or correct or right, ask for forgiveness and ask for help and try to go to the right track. Can we do that during the liturgy? Can we do that? So everyone before taking communion. And while you have the Lord in your mouth, ask for help. Oh my Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen my weakness. Oh my Lord Jesus Christ, help me. Oh my Lord Jesus Christ, fill my heart with your love. Help me to, to, to be patient, to be loving, to be merciful. And so on. Rabbina yadina hayat al-istadad wa hayat al الشيطان بيشغل وبيلهينا بيلهينا أنا أول واحد صدقوني الشيطان عمال يلهينا أي كلام أي كلام فاضي وفجأة كده الزمن لما يقف يقول يا نهار أبيض خلاص كده إيه ده؟ يعني إيه؟ يعني إيه؟ يعني إيه؟ أنا ما لحقتش أتوب أنا ما لحقتش أروح لأبونا أنا ما لحقتش أصلي بنفسي أنا ما لحقتش أقرأ الإنجيل أنا ما لحقتش أساعد فلان أنا ما لحقتش مش عارف أعمل إيه أنا ما لحقتش خلاص كده؟ أه خلاص كده خلاص كده أنت بقالك كام سنة؟ بقالك كام يوم؟ بقالك كام ساعة؟ وربنا مطول باله مطول باله مطول باله طب وربنا مطول باله ليه؟ عشان آخد بالي عشان أتوب عشان اللي زعلان من حد يصالحه عشان 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 يكون في سلام بيننا وبين بعض يكون سلام بيننا وبين ربنا ونقدر نقف قدامه واحنا فرحانين ونقدر نستقبله واحنا يعني مشتاقين امين تعالى يا رب يسوع كم واحد مننا وانا اولكم يقدر يقول امين تعالى يا رب يسوع طب ولو قلنا له بلاش تيجي دلوقتي هنقول يعني له بلاش تيجي ليه كل واحد يسال نفسه اقول له بلاش تيجي ليه 
لان عايز انبسط اكتر على الارض لان ما لحقتش هيكون عندي عربيه حلوه لانه ما لحقتش اخد شهادات لانه ما لحقتش يبقى عندي بيت حلو ولا هقول له بلاش تيجي دلوقتي عشان اقدم توبه ولا اقول له بلاش تيجي دلوقتي عشان لسه ما ما عملتش اعمال رحمه وقدرت اساعد الناس كما ينبغي فرصه حلوه في وقت القدام ده ان احنا نفكر في المعاني الحلوه دي وقول لنفسك انا واقف قدام ربنا وهقف قدامه في مجيء تاني هقول له ايه؟ هقول له ايه؟ هعمل ايه؟ وقول له يا رب ارحمني انا الخاطئ وسامحني وساعدني يا رب ان اكون مستعد في كل وقت لان كل مجد وكرامه في الايام